everyone and welcome to a new video. So today I'm showing you my bathing routine with Tulip and this is the first time I've bathed her in maybe five months because it's been winter here in Canada and it's just too cold to bathe your horses if you don't have a heated wash stall, which I don't. So here's just the before. I do keep her tail in a tail bag, so that's why it's a bit cleaner than usual, but it's still, as you can see, very stained. And she also wears a blanket, so everywhere where her blanket covers is still moderately white. And everywhere where the blanket doesn't cover is just completely disgusting, as you can see, stained brown. Like, she's clean brushed-wise, but it's just so stained it's completely gross and her mane is in braids because I um, I'm mane training her right now because I want her to have a flat mane ish and it's not really working but hopefully it starts to work soon so the first thing I did is just completely took out all of the elastics and then I'm going to use the mane and tail shampoo and conditioner today but honestly a lot of the time I just use like dollar store shampoo and conditioner and that works really well too so I'm just rinsing off her body first, rinsing her off all over, and I'm focusing more on the dirty parts today. It's still a little chilly outside, so I didn't want to do like a full, full bathe and scrub her down and keep her cold for too long. So I'm mostly just going where she really needs it. And I use a jelly scrubber, but I'm sure you could also just use a curry, curry comb and stuff. I prefer the method of just putting the soap right on the horse and scrubbing it in, as opposed to the bucket method with like a sponge and stuff because I don't find that works as well. I don't know, maybe you people like it more, but I really prefer just putting it straight on the horse and then scrubbing it in. So then I start on the tail. For the tail, I just put shampoo straight into my hands and then I really try to scrub it through. And I like to leave the soap in the tail for a really long time to let it fully penetrate the horse. If show season ever starts up again, then I might buy myself some of that purple shampoo, but it's very expensive, so I'm not using it right now, but I've heard really good things about purple, sh purple shampoo for white horses, so I might try it. Anyways, now I'm working on her right side. For some reason, her right side was a lot worse, so I just spent a lot of time scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing. Again, I need some purple shampoo. That would be helpful. And then after that, I rinse her entire body. And as you can see, sometimes she starts to dance a bit and like jump around, but I'm not too worried because Tulip doesn't love water um, like some horses, so I just be patient with her. And then I'm working on her tail now, so I rinse out all of the shampoo really thoroughly, and then I start to put in a lot of conditioner, and then I leave the conditioner for like 10 minutes in there at least. So now I'm going to work on her face a little bit while the conditioner's in there. So I put a little bit of soap in the bottom of a bucket with some water in it, and I mix it all around. Again, Tulip doesn't love water, so that's why I do this method for her face as opposed to just like hosing her face right off because she doesn't let me do that, and I want to be accommodating towards her. So um, I just scrub down her face with this soapy water. Um, it's very, very watery because it's near her eyes, obviously, so I wouldn't want to ever sting her eyes. So I just scrub this through really thoroughly, and then after this, I'll just do the same thing but without soap in it to rinse out all off her face. Okay, so I rinsed off her entire body and then I sweat scraped her and then I put her in a stall to dry for a while while I worked my other horse and just let her dry off. So here's her tail, kind of still ratty looking. She's not looking too hot yet. Okay, so then once she's all dry, about an hour later, I use my favorite thing in the entire world, which is cowboy magic. You only need a really little bit and it goes a super long way, so that's really nice. I put it in her tail and then I brush it all through making sure I go from top to bottom um, but again her tail's always in a tail bag so it makes it a lot easier and then here I'm cutting it um, I cut off a pretty good amount her tail grows really quickly so that's kind of nice and I'm trying to grow out all this stained part the bottom is really stained from when I first got her so I'm trying to grow that all out um, so yeah it's nice and fluffy looking look cute and then I brush out her mane next. Um, I was going to put it back in braids, but I decided not to. Um, I'm just going to give it a break from mane training for a bit. And then I brush out her forelock too, which she actually really likes. Okay, and then I take some Shoshin. I honestly don't love Shoshin, um, but it is the only like mane or body conditioner I had on hand. So it just... I used it because I had it. Um, and then I take a really clean brush and then I spray the body 
conditioner stuff onto the brush and I spread it all over the body making sure not to put any shoshin where the saddle goes because that's terrifying I don't want to slip off my horse (laughs) so I only put it where the saddle doesn't go and then I move back to her tail so for her tail what I do is I do a dutch braid um starting like halfway down her tailbone And then um, I make sure to make it fairly loose because you don't want it pulling too hard and cutting off the circulation to the tail. So I make sure to make it a bit loose until I reach the bottom of the tailbone where I end the Dutch braid part and I just make it a regular braid. And I make sure it's really um, secure and tight uh, because I want it to stay in, obviously. So at this point, the braid goes from being a bit loose to very tight. And then I braid all the way down the tail and I just kind of pull out some of the loose hair sometimes. Um, But yeah, I keep her tail in a tail bag because she's a white horse, obviously, and it just helps with keeping it clean. And like I said, it's really stained from when I first got her. So I'm trying to grow out all the stained stuff and I don't want her restaining it while I'm growing out the stained part, if you know what I mean. Okay, when I get to the bottom, I just use some regular banding elastics um, to band it. And then I tie off like the loose hair at the top of the tail while I put the tail bag on so it doesn't get caught. So I put the tail bag on and then what I do to keep it secure, this is the best method I've found. I put the two pieces through a part of the braid. And remember, you never ever want to tie a tail bag onto the tail bone. You want to tie it right where the bone ends or right below it, I mean. So yes, I put those through and then... Um, I tie it up and then I put an elastic over top and this helps really secure it and make sure it stays in. It's the best method I found. And this is what it looks like when I'm done. And I replace this about every two weeks. All right, so this is what Tulip looked like when she was done. Obviously, she's not fully dry, but I had to go, so I just had to film it here. Um, She looked really nice. I was really happy. Of course, I'm not actually showing her, so that's why it's like not the most thorough Um, bathing I've ever done. I just wanted to make her look a bit more presentable because she looked like a wild animal. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more. Bye!